Hello everyone, it's Joshua So. We're back on a new episode, a new live stream here in uh, Utah, and it's a nice sunny day. It's getting warmer and warmer. Really excited for the spring uh, and the summer to just uh, kick in the door. So anyways, this, this has been a, a cold winter. Um, with this new live stream, we're going to be having a different format. So I have a front camera and I also have a side camera. I've been experimenting with this for a while, but I just never could have done it and pulled it off with the setup I had. But now I actually have Vienna Ensemble Pro uh, hooked up on a secondary computer. And I realized by doing this, it, it actually tackles a lot of different problems I've had doing these live streams. So I hope these streams are a little bit smoother, um, less of a latency issue with the, or the synchronization issues with the audio and video. And let's uh, give it a go today to see if it works. Um, I've been anticipating this for a bit and it's finally arrived. So. Um, let me go ahead and switch cameras. I actually prefer the side camera um, when I'm working, but when I'm talking, I think it'd be better to, uh, you know, do a face-to-face -face conversation and uh, just make it more personable. Um, with that being said, let me remember my shortcut keys because it's uh, been a long day for me. Let's see if I can turn this off. Aha, look at that. Well, so for today, we are going to continue this epic fantasy theme. This is the third episode of this little series. Uh, whenever I start a bigger project like this one uh, that requires uh, multi multiple episodes, I think it's just nice to take your time and uh, you know not rush it. So w however many streams that is going to take us to make, We'll, we'll do it. So hang tight as we do that. Um, let me go ahead and press play. Alright, so hopefully my audio is working okay. Um, hopefully I'm still in sync and all that good stuff. Um, I think w the big thing that we're going to be working on today is measures 9 through 12 and then coming up with a new section. Uh, the 9 through 12 is a bit thin right now as you can uh, compare it to its uh, pr predecessors or their previous bars. Um, Let's just listen to this part again, right where the melody kicks off. Okay, so we got that bass line. Let's um, start layering other things in there. So let's uh, listen to the, the string part itself with all the strings. Okay, so there's a kind of a lag I'm hearing. And that's probably due to, let's see here. Maybe I can pull this up, see what's going on. It might be something to do with this millisecond offset. Okay, so um, in the previous sessions, I was using a um, um, VN Ensemble Pro uh, local on my computer, if, that, if you guys care. Uh, even about that, but um, the problem is when I, I switch, I, I converted the session to the other workflow I have, and so some of the stuff that um, was already uh, uh, adjusted and modified here, I have to do it again. So let's say this is negative 80. Okay. 
All right, great. I was afraid some of this would happen, so bear with me as I fix these real quick. This one is negative 80 as well. So let's listen to the strings. Cool. All right, let's keep going here. I think the Jaeger stuff is fine. Okay, let's listen to this one. Okay, so this is a, a hair behind as well. So let's just say negative 80. Okay, sounds great. Let's listen to the violin. It's weird. Um, the sustains actually are on time, it seems like. Um, a bit more than the the actual um, spiccatos. Let's, let's actually verify that with the violin, first violins. Yeah, so like the sustains are actually on time, and now uh, with that negative 80, it actually sounds ahead of the beat, which is interesting. Um, but that could also just be because these notes are not quantized. So that might help. I do like the some of the excitement where playing ahead of the beat uh, actually uh, offers some just more humanization, more energy, excitement. But... Um, I'm just I'm just thinking out loud here. Maybe we should just tuck that in a bit, something like that. Not not 100 percent, but uh, uh, just a, a light quantize. Okay, um, keep keep on keeping on here. Let's listen to the other stuff. Oh yeah, okay. So you know, there's some other really great things that's happening in this uh, introduction. And maybe the balancing just could be better. So let, let's uh, hear this much. Okay, so the dulcimer stuff really pops through, but not this guitar so much. So let's listen to this guitar line. And um, maybe we can keep a guitar line going uh, for the other parts as well. So uh, I'll try not to forget about that. Let's see here. Oh, see, and this one's not even on, so that's great to know. Let's make sure this turns on. Um, I think actually I might have to adjust something in my Beyond Ensemble. Let's actually take a look. See, this is guitar. Uh, you guys can't see it, but I can up here. Okay, so the line is playing. Oh yeah, I remember now. I have to like do something funky with the key switch. So let's see if that helps. Um, give me one second. Okay, and just got to kick on my other keyboard. To, all right, there we go. Um, so I actually have like this weird hybrid studio right now. I work from home for the most part, but I do uh, assist other composers. And uh, this is my bread and butter, this whole setup. Um, this keyboard actually is hooked up two ways. One is uh, like the MIDI, uh, just a traditional MIDI cable. And the other is a USB port, and uh, so half the day when I'm assisting, I'm on Max, and I have to, you know, I, I don't want to, like, keep taking cables out back and forth, so I just switch from USB to the MIDI ports, and it works really well. So um, when I'm just doing my own projects, um, this is MIDI port cable, and then the other one's USB. Anyways, um... There's a lot of weird things I have to remember when I'm switching back and forth. And boy, I had a long day today. Uh, let's hear this one. Okay, so let's bring this one over to, um, or let's just bring it up in the mix. Either that, I'm just thinking out loud. It might be better just to do this. So let's bring up the CC7 data. All right, now you can really hear it. Okay, let's just make sure this sounds good. Okay, 
Okay, cool. So at least you can hear some of those notes are uh, a little behind the B. That's that's okay. I'm, I'm just going to um, let that be for the most part. I think one of those notes, those E's were a bit behind. But let's um, go ahead and press play and listen for this other part. Cool. Let's bring this one up as well. So we'll do this. Bring that up 10, maybe too much. So let's, uh, that was more like 20. So let's go uh, 72, that's like seven units higher. Hmm, interesting. So this one could use a little bit of like delay or something to, to help with the, um, the space. It just sounds so dry, so what we can do here is uh, we can add some delay sound toys. Um, let's add an Echo Boy. And then I just use a preset, so it just makes it go real by real quick. Um, ping pong is kind of cool. All right, let's hear that. OK, let's try again. Try 16 notes. Okay, and then this in conjunction with um, some, uh, it made it a little bit drier. And then uh, in conjunction with some reverb, really helps. Um, just like a a dry reverb sounds, so, um, dry dry to wet ratio. I mean, so let's go here and add another chain. Um, Let's just do a Valhalla room. And let's put this around there. Um, let's do a guitar room. Yeah, it kind of uh, helps with just bringing some space into that. And then uh, let's tuck down some of the highs. And then that way you can actually, you can bring up the volume now and it'll sound better. Cool. So yeah, so that that's kind of the trick. Um, it's, it's not, it's, gonna, it's not like dialed in yet, but that's the idea. Um, what else? What else? What else? Do -do -do. Maybe just bring up the volume here. All right, and the last thing I'll do is just uh, let's tuck this over to one side. Let's tuck this one to the right side, like so, and bring this to the right. These are um, separate channels. So if we pan them over, that, that might uh, give it more depth as well. Let's see, that might be too, too much, we'll see. Oops. I'm just going to dial in a little more, with my headphones at least. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. So, um, in addition to what we're doing uh, later on, I think uh, what would be cool is 
maybe add guitar back in either in this section or the or the previous section before. Um, okay, so I, I I mean this sounds pretty good as is. So I don't know if I want to add guitar there. Let's try this section on measure nine. All right, so th I don't. Th this might not be the best uh, guitars to do the trick. If I'm, w let, let's say I want want to do a, like a strumming pattern, it might be better to use a like a strumming sample rather than something like this. Although I believe these might have some strumming samples in them. Let me just double check here. So if if I do have a chance to use like even like if they're power chord samples. That might be better than nothing. Um, well, they do have power chord samples. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm just kind of curious how that would sound. Uh, I don't have it programmed in with being a, um ensemble per se, but, you know, let's go ahead and just add it in. So this is a key switch for that. And then uh, just give me one second here. I'm going to do that for the other one. And I think we'll do the key switch. So let's see how this goes. These are C1 on the computer that is saying. Okay, so if I go back here and I hit C1. <laughs> All right, so uh, already there's a problem, which is um, uh, this uh, channel is, is highly uh, mixed and has a lot of effects added in there. So may maybe what we need to do is kind of dial that, that back a bit. And with uh, keeping that in mind, um, Maybe not doing so so mo so busy or so rhythmic on the left side, but maybe more on the right side, and, and see if we can pull it off that way. So, so in the key of G. Okay, I'm not sure why the sound's not coming up, but let's try that again. Oops, something happened funky there. Let's try again. Okay. And let's see why those didn't sound. Huh, that's weird. Um it's it's playing but not always so let's see if i can just and th this is like a old school way of doing key switches and that's just cuz of the uh programming here i don't have uh expression maps built in for this one per se so, but uh, let's see, let's hear how it sounds so if i go like this That's kind of cool. So um, I did. I just copied and pasted that over to the right side. Okay. So um, what we need to do also is with this left hand side, maybe the right hand side too. We we just have to dial in the right amount of uh, sp uh, space or reverb for both, because right now it's it's kind of sounds weird when you solo it. So. I'm going to have to figure out how to get that in the right balance, but I'm just going to go with this copy over and let's do that to the right side as well. Let's do Valhalla here. Um, oops, that's the wrong one. Let's do the room verb like that. Okay. And then that's better. 
<laughs> okay, so now there's a right amount of bounce on the uh, processing. The right hand, let's go ahead and do something more like triplet oriented. Oops. Like that. And then let's do dun 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 dun. See if how this would sound. Dun 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 dun. Let's go dun 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 dun. Something like that. Oops. Um. Okay, let's do that, and on this one, let's do that. Cool, all right, and then let's maybe accent the ends, like so. Okay, and now all of a sudden, Oh, you know what? Okay, I, I know what I just did. I, I uh, flipped it. I meant to put this one down here. Um, and <laughs> I meant to do that one over there. Let's see. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, you, if it was palm muted, that's even, that's pretty cool too. Dun, 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 dun. That's another idea. Okay, here's another idea. So if I were to palm mute it, how would that sound? I'm it's kinda it's, it's interesting adding guitar into a, like an orchestral thing, but I'm gonna go back to my V ensemble and add palm mute to this template and we'll see if that does anything. Um palm mute picked. Okay, let's put let's see the key switch for that. That's B zero. Um and let's see the other one. Same thing would probably be zero as well. Palm mute. Okay, so going back to my session, let's go and do B zero. Okay, so this one would go down. Cool. Um, and then this one too. Okay, so uh, just an idea then is if we were to go jun, 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 what if I actually just made it more dynamic? So something like jun, 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 like that, even more. Okay, so just another idea here I'm pursuing. kind of rocky now okay and then uh, let's add a power chord to that mix so even just the fifth is nice it's interesting I'm, I'm shifting it over just a, a tad What if, so what if we did that for all of them? Um, let's quantize the end there. Okay. So then B flat. F back to G. Try that. Okay. Let's bring down the D's. Cool. That's kind of interesting. Uh, <laughs> okay, so 
it's a it's a small texture. It's, it's, it's not gonna really make or break a track, but it's kind of fun to add that in and see where it goes. Uh, we can feature more guitar down in the next half, maybe. And let's hear something else. Something's a little funky at the end. Yeah. I'm not sure. I can't put my finger on what it is, but maybe it's, it's too much crescendo. It's short. I don't know. Okay. Let's see what's coming up here. Alright, and I think maybe on this I can go down and then up again. Let's try again. Um, yeah, it uh, sounds better. Uh, there's something, I, I was hearing something in the strings. Maybe the, the last note just wasn't uh, sustaining long enough. And then this one here. Okay, anyways. So uh, um, let's add some drums into the mix and, and see how that plays with this part. So just as a template or um, continuing the, the scheme, Okay, um, also, seems a bit rumbly. I think we could probably bring some of that down. Okay, so, is that the best choice of rhythm there? Let's make it a little busier. Interesting. I think uh, back here we had some interesting thing going on. I see. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna mute this guy. Okay, so if I'm going to do anything, it, it, it should drive. What I'll do is, let's do half and half, something like this. Bum, and then triplet with some sixteenths or eighth, no, sixteenth, like that. I don't think I even need the triplet grid. Okay, boom. Uh, it looks like we have a guest. Hey, Shidia, or is, is it Skidia? Skidia Studios. Nice to meet you. Welcome on board. Okay, here we go. There you go. That's it. So let's go ahead and do like a half and half approach with this going all the way through. Something like that. Okay, maybe on the end. Bum, bum, ba, bum. Or even, it maybe it doesn't have to be uh, all the way like this, but let's see here. You know, bum, bum, ba, bum, bum is, is pretty good to me. Something like that. Or if I were to do this. Okay, there you go. 
Okay, cool. So let's do that actually. Boom. All right, next. Uh, and that's busy. There's a lot of ba base rumbles in that, so we got to be careful. Other things that we layer on top. Uh, maybe not so much low end anymore. Let's uh, look at the snare. So let's. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you know, the snare could probably keep driving. Um, what, what we could do here, though, is maybe, let's see, let's, l let's maybe modify that a bit. Okay, so let's do a roll this time. Mix it up a bit. Yeah, so like that. Okay. Meet those guys. And then this one unmute. Okay, let's put a little downbeat as well, like that, and like that. Okay, so let's see how that sounds all the way through. I might actually add this little pickup. Cool. Okay, now let's start to add more energy to the mix. Um, what, what's happening in the melody and the uh, support? So. Let's go ahead and look at the horn line. <laughs> okay, well, I'm missing a note. So let's see what happened here. I probably got chopped off uh, when I was like cutting and pasting somewhere. So let's just add in a note and figure out where it was landing. Let's see. I think this is the melody. Oh, it looks like it's an octaves. Okay, so that's the uh, harmony. Let's look at trumpets. Okay, let's look at this one too. Oh, interesting. You know what? Let's um uh it's not wanting me to edit that. Let's go ahead and change this up a bit. I'm not sure why I have the G's sustaining so long. Uh, I see. I was trying to be clever last time and add some kind of some kind of um, uh, counterpart, or uh, and it, it doesn't do anything to me. So um, it does change right here. It branches off. So what might be better is just copying 
the horn line here for a bit. Okay. That sounds better. Okay, so a little bit cleaner. And then the bass line. Okay, um, all right. So then it looks like maybe the cello bass is, is just doubling with the trombone tuba. Uh, let's add the strings back in, the um, our acoustic guitars. Okay, cool. So all of that's happening. You know, the, the the guitar part could probably be slightly busier. It's not going to, again, really stand out and, and make a huge difference, but these are fun little details. See if I can just uh, uh, dish them out really quick. Okay, so first off, um, with these notes, which I will only do that. So these are my left-hand side uh, guitars. Let's just do this. Okay, and then let's um, maybe on every end, let's do this. Let's see, like that. Okay, I'm making it a little more simple on the left hand because of the uh, delay that's happening. Okay, all right, now let's add um, a little bit of, of a different chord every now and then, so. So like maybe on this note, now I'm going to have to do all parts. Um, something like that. All right, either uh, D or uh, actually, I, I should look at the root. Um, so a G in that case, or an A. Hmm. Maybe a G. Yeah, it's, it's a small detail. Um, I can hear it. And then, yeah, I don't think it can go anywhere else. You could do that. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're we're gonna just add that little detail in. Okay. Um. Let's see. What are we missing? We got uh, woodwinds that we're missing. Okay. So let's add woodwinds in the mix here. Uh, woodwinds aren't really playing here at all. So. Uh, let's look up another woodwind instrument and um, perhaps do group ones. I, I, I like working in groups just because it's much quicker. Um, let's see. Maybe we'll do these three flutes and three somethings. So three clarinets, three flutes. Uh, I don't think there's three oboes, but there's three bassoons. Um, and maybe if we want an oboe, we can, why not add this one? Oh, my bad, this one. One of these, one of these three. Actually, let's uh, hide these guys. Okay, so 
now I can turn them on. I would do this. Is it on though? So I gotta turn them on. All right, here we go. And then go over here. It's my little trick to uh, turn these on remotely. Two different computers. Okay, so then got that. Um, also, let's turn this one on. I also have buttons for that. Okay, so over here, let's see if we can add some kind of some drama. To be honest, uh, there's not much we need to do. I mean, you can really go crazy on the orchestration, um, but I think what would be nice is just uh, look like a doubling here. Uh, uh, that's tuba, sorry. I meant to do this one. Um, let's just double that over with some of the, f the flutes and clarinet oboe, maybe. Let's just try that first. So... Are these on? Great. Okay, for these guys, let's put them into one of these. Staccatissimo. I guess both have them. Okay, and then for some reason it's not sounding. I can hear it when I play, but it's not sounding when I'm actually soloing. Let's see what's wrong. That's really strange. Oh, it's just so low, that's why. Okay, so then let's bring this up. Okay, I know what happened. I copied the wrong one. So let's go back to this guy. Um, I see, I see. Okay, so we're going to uh, do that again, but now that I, I have a better grasp of what's going on, I, I thought I was hearing something else. Let's try this. All right, even higher. So um, I might want to try even in piccolo just f to have it in their range better. see here. Is this not on? Maybe? Let's try turning that on first. Okay, it's on. And then let's see what range it's in. Okay. Okay. And then this one is kind of bright and loud as well. So let's go ahead and punch in that. And maybe bring this down. Okay, it's not even going into the high note there. So maybe one octave lower and let's hear that together. Now let's bring the volume down even more. Cool. So there's that, and then there's also clarinet, but not. I'm not sure if we need to do it. Let's let's give it a try though. I mean, it could go either low or high. Make sure these are in staccatissimo. OK, 
Okay, and it's, there's like some weird delay happening there. Whoa, okay, so a, a little bit behind the beat for the most part. There's just some weird um, transition thing happening there. I mean, it sounds good when you're just doing in that. Uh, now it sounds good. I don't know what I did. Well, it sounds better now. What, whatever happened, it was kind of behind the beat. Maybe it was still loading. Who knows? Uh, well, let's bring this down as well. Okay. Okay, cool. Maybe uh, double the, the bassoon part. I don't think I did this one either. Okay, so we should be good now. Cool. All right, so there's that's one idea. Uh, when I'm hearing that the bassoon could be blended better, I, I'm thinking, uh, what if we tried a different way? Um, and I'm just going to double the horn line instead in the bassoon part. See how that sounds. Cool. And then we might have to shape this a bit. Uh, let's bring that down. Let's try again. Okay, already better. So uh, let's just do that. And then get rid of that. Sorry, and there you go. So essentially, we're we're doubling here um, with some some of the elements down below. I think that sounds pretty good. Uh, it still gives some uh, like twinkly energy in the highs. Uh, uh, the only thing I'm thinking here is should I do the violin melody here still? Not really melody, but it's like some kind of counter thing. Um, I'm just wondering if this will conflict. Okay, maybe uh, after listening to what the the high woodwinds are doing, I might want to change this line slightly. So I'm going. Da Maybe maybe switching this note. All right, and notice how wow, that's quite a ahead of the beat there. Uh, this is um, this is really uh, with the legato. Maybe it's it's why it's so ahead of the beat. But let's see. Anyways, I, I was looking at the time, the timing of the notes more than anything. Um, let's go ahead and look at the actual harmony and the pitches. Okay. 
So right here. Um. Let's see here. Mm -mm. What if we go F? Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, it's high though. Okay, so let's do an A instead. And then here, maybe a an F. Let's make sure these don't overlap. Over here, you can do the mono overlap. Okay, um, I'm wondering if I should just keep this all in the same vicinity with this uh, particular voicing. So let's go, same thing. Okay, it's a little less distracting and sounds more in, in that, uh, where it should be. So, you know what, why don't we take over the melody here? I mean, the the other brass can still keep going, but after listening to it, it almost sounds like it needs to just go da, na, na, like that. Okay, so then that means this can move uh, in an upward shape as well. So this can go A, F A. That sounds better. Okay, so then, uh, yeah, I th I think that's good. Maybe maybe bring up the melody a little more. This should be a F, huh? So let's highlight again those two notes or two instruments. Color those different so you can see the difference. And then uh, this should go to uh, F. And hmm. So you're going A. That's okay. You can double that. Uh, it might be better if it's this. Cool. So then, uh, the only other thing I'm hearing is it has this weird, um, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? The 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 shape or the the type of expression sounds funny. So, um, what if I did something like this? Oh, so it's, it's actually 
it's within the sample. What if we change this to sus um, yeah, sustain marcado is what it's saying, or mar just marcado. Cool. So then we can maybe bring that down slightly in the mix, um, but it, it almost needs that. So just a little bit of a, a hard attack. There you go. Yeah. Sounds better. Um, and, and that's just in the melody. You could also do it here. So this little uh, harmony line. So then maybe bring that down velocity. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, and there's that. Da, na, na, na. Where's that coming from? Okay. All right, so we got to change that line. Da, da, da. Maybe double this. So whatever is happening here, just go like that. Okay, cool. Da, 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 da. You know, I feel like this da -da 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 is really cool, but it might might just be a woodwind line. Um, let's let's experiment here for a second. Let's make sure that these are all on the right sample or expression. Let's see. Bring up that. Okay, um, because uh, we have that. Da, da, na, na, na. I mean, another thing we could do is the all the woodwinds can just join in with the melody instead of doing that. But I'm I'm just seeing if we can keep this energy going. Some some uh, um, like a motor or like a a pro propelling motion of some sort. So then uh, this opens this up. Going back to what we're doing, it almost makes sense to just take uh, or do a melody line here as well. So, let's see. And then if we just double that, double the voicing there, and let's see how we should do this. So then, um, uh, yeah, I was afraid I was going to do that. So I can do this. Just uh, copy, paste that some sort. Let's see, how should we do this? Okay, so if we were to do that, let's be a little more methodical. 
All right, so glue those guys. And uh, here we go. Then we're gonna undo all that. Okay, then put this back in. It wasn't sli it wasn't on the grid per se, hundred percent. So let's paste that. Um, there you go. And uh, I think we got it. All right. So looking at these guys. Um, a legato would be nice here for the most part. Let's see. But, you know, it might need more definition, so let's do the marcato instead. Okay, and it's not da da da, it's a triplet, so, um, or wh wherever you want to call it, 6 8. So if we're in 6 8, then we do that thing. Oh, hello, wrong button. I'm in Mac mode still. There we go. Okay, I was ahead of the beat, so let's fix that real quick. Okay, and that was the head of the bee as well. So let's see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Oh, I see. It's, it's got to be on the beat like that. Four. Okay. Uh, let's make sure the cutoff is in the right spot. So let's look at uh, one of these trumpet lines. And it looks like it's just a hair late. Okay, so we want to cut off together. Um, let's just make sure the balancing is, is good there. Okay, so this one probably can go down since they're doubling. And we could do harmony, but you know it's nice to just re uh, bring out that melody because that that's what we're re taking, we're, we're driving this home is is uh, reinforcing this call response thing that's happening in bar five and bar nine. Uh, let's let's go ahead and press play from five one more time. Starting to sound good. Um, now that we have the plan for upper strings, lower strings, one thing I I don't really have um, spelled out or it's not really shown is that the viola line is here. Is uh, you don't see viola here, but it is uh, playing in this section, and that's. Um, kind of unfortunate because I started with the ensemble patch and then sort of went halfway through and, and started orchestrating it. Uh, but this uh, essentially would be like a cello slash viola line. Probably more cello, uh, to be honest, um, but maybe this one would be the viola. Nope, that's probably more of a string uh, violin so let's actually mute that and let's put that also somewhere up there so let's go ahead and delete that and bring it up and double it somewhere in the woodwinds so we have flutes we have oboes let's just put in all sh all three the big shebang 
Okay, so let's also make sure that all of these have some kind of articulation assigned to it. So we have staccatissimo, probably the best. Um, we could add some accenting. I, I guess there's already some of that here. Uh, what we could do is exaggerate it more, though. And when I say exaggerate it, the, the downbeats are a little bit um, brought out more, in a sense. Okay, so let's listen to that again. Okay, let's listen to here. Okay, so the there's oboe that comes in, and I don't think I had oboe before that. Um, it's not. I mean, it's kind of interesting to add oboe right there. I would say it's just kind of here aloud, so it's. Let's try again. And then did I assign this? No, I didn't. Let's make sure it's either that or this. I think stac staccato is good. Okay, so let's look at this line. This is a D2. Interesting. So technically a viola could play this, but it's, it's, it, it is sounding a bit flabby and weak around that range. Um, the, the lowest note on a s uh, viola would be this note, the C. Um, I'm wondering, what if I went uh, an octave higher? to account for that and just get it into a better range for the viola. But you know, then again, uh, you, you hear violin because it's an ensemble patch. So this is where I might actually <laughs> load up a, a Pacific Strings viol viola patch instead and just um, kind of like trade that melody, trade that voicing down here. Let's try it. Uh, we got to turn it on, of course. Let's do that real quick. Okay, here we go. So we have spiccato. Should be loaded now. Sounds better. And you want to make sure it's, it's, it's in that like same stereo image as well. It's a bit loud, so let's go ahead and um, punch in a volume. Um, well, I'm actually curious. What, how would it sound in one octave below that? Whoa, that sounds weird. Wow, it sounds really funky in that range. Uh, let's just br uh, keep it in this range then. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then uh, I do need to make sure that this is at negative 80. So let's go ahead and now fuse these all together. Okay, cool that. Um, I probably want to bring the woodwind down s ever so slightly too.
Okay. All right. Let's let's see. Uh, I also have this ensemble patch up here. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, volume-wise, it's it's still kind of loud, huh? If you were to uh, hear the transition here. So first off. I feel like the woodwind combo right here is a bit soft, honestly. So let's bring this one up. But then on these ones, I don't want to, well, I, I guess we could um, tweak the expression here on all of these and see if that helps. Uh, let's see. Uh, what was I going to do? Like this. Okay, so what should we do? Let's bring that all down. Like that. Cool. All right, and then some of these instruments are a bit dry in the mix, um, a bit in your face, and uh, very pan to the left as well uh, compared to this one. Right, so maybe we can center these woodwind instruments a bit. Um, best way to do that is probably just in the mix now at, at this point instead of using MIDI stuff. So let's go over here and we're going to narrow the image just a bit. And let's do that for all of them. So then we go over to if I press down, does it change? Let's see. Nope. Okay, so this is piccolo. This is flute. Um, I guess I have to click on these individually. And then, oh, you know what? I think if I do that, then we're good. So let's see. So this is flutes. Flutes, let's go ahead and I, either we can narrow it. Um, another thought is just making it more centered so just offsetting the um balance sometimes when you do this it, you kind of lose the the reverb or actually not, the reverb is a sand but uh, what i'm trying to say is you, you miss some of that the rich uh early reflections or whatever you want to call that in the um in the sample that is playing in but let's see if i try that now Cool. All right, so let's listen to the other ones. Clarinet's pretty good. I like the bassoon on the right, actually, to be honest. Um, but the oboe. Okay, so this one could also be uh, centered a bit more. Something like that. Okay, and... This one is a bit bright as well. I think we could probably tame some of the highs. might now be um uh, uh, let me say it again it might now be a bit too quiet so let's bring that up uh, that much Great. So there's probably some uh, symbol hits that we can add here to just complete this section out.
So let's do that with maybe bass drum hits as well. So we have uh, some bass drum here. So we have two symbols. We have a crash set right here in blue and then in the green is the suspended stuff. Let's just do crash for a second. So we're going to double that into the bass drum. Okay, I'm going to glue it together so I can see where I'm at with the notes. Um, I think this actually is a note. Cool. I think that's a, that's a good note. Let's go a bit louder. Okay. All right, then. It's kind of hard to hear in my headphones with the low end, um, but I'm just going to solo it to just make sure at least this part is balanced. I see. So it's kind of being masked by uh, this action drum thing that's happening. So we, we do have to be careful not to um, overwhelm the low end. Cool. So uh, yeah, might not really do much, but let's let's add it in now, and and see if that becomes a problem later. Cool. I feel like the crash is a bit behind the beat. Alright, so let's just bring this back, um, dial negative 50, let's go back over here. Cool. Alright, moving on, let's go ahead and glue all these guys. What is my, I have a key switch that, let's see, what was it, was it this? Nope. Uh, hold on. Give me one sec. Um, huh. I don't know. I had a, a fun little macro key that uh, glues everything together, even though I'm pretty much there. Um, I have to double check that and see which key I assigned that to. All right. So we have that much now. And uh, let's see our time here. Right now it is... 9.30, 9.30 p.m. Okay, so we have about 30 minutes just to figure out uh, a next section plan and maybe sketch something out. Let's go ahead and decide. This will be our B section. Let's put that in now, B, I'll just say B. Okay, and you, you got your, your double A's right here. Your double A energizer sections and then now you have your B section a Duracell so let's go ahead and see what we could do to contrast that right now everything's so like full force with a nice melody um, hopefully the me melody isn't doesn't get so boring yet so um, at this point you want to contrast that right <laughs> Okay, so we might have to change some of these endings because basically I'm just copied and pasted some of these lines. Right, and then here. Right, a lot of, a lot of da 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 da. We might, we might want to change that uh, for the B section, but it, it, it really depends what we're going to be doing. So we'll keep that in mind. Um, just, let's just say, don't be married to this little ending here. Um, keep, keep an open mind. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Here, I'm gonna grab a piano. Do I have a piano? Okay. Um, 
So. Something like that. So I'm thinking maybe going to the uh, E flat. What what would that be? The six, the the negative six chord. When I say negative, I mean like minor six chord. Something like that. Oh, well, hello. Give it a second. Maybe the computer is like having a weird brain fart. Okay, so here I'm gonna. I'm just gonna do some chords. How about that? So it'll be like. So that much. So we have E flat, B flat, F, G minor. And then. Um, I need to repeat though. I, it's a little too short to try to make it make a little wrap up there. So blah 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 blah. Okay, so let's repeat it, but um, I just don't like to go so high all the time. So, so uh, let's what's the last part again?
So let's let's go low on the melody, and then kind of build up on the second time. So. Okay, so uh, let's see if I can remember that. Interesting. I kind of like going to the G minor instead on that second time. So E E flat. And then back to F. Back to G minor. Hmm. The ending was a little different last time. Um, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. So f we're flipping the chords on the second time. And the first time is E flat, and then B flat, F, and then G minor. And then on the second half, it's going to go E flat, G minor, F, and then B flat, um, and then maybe C something, well, maybe we can lead up to C. So we have. Back to E flat, I guess. Da, 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 da. Uh, let's, let's go back to the. Uh, I'll play the whole thing one more time. Oh, actually. Oops. like here as that's happening you can go That's interesting, so... So I 
kind of want to end with a C for some reason. Uh, it'd be kind of cool to do that. Just trying to figure out the connective tissues with all of that. Okay, let's do a quick uh, chord pass to kind of um, at least engage and set the structure. Wrong chord. All right, so on this part, it's uh, what is that chord? That should be a B flat. Okay, so let's do it again. Oh, it did a weird skip. Let's try again. It's a bit heroic. Uh, let's see. Dun, dun, so. Let's do it one more time. I, I'm almost there. So that's that last part is debatable, but the first uh, everything up until about here is good. So let's try uh, doing this. Pedals to note length. That way, get rid of the pedaling. Um, let's just quantize this real quick. So we have that, and then I maybe wanted to change one baseline voicing. It's not really. Um, that big of a deal, but I'm just gonna do it right here. Should be a E flat. Yeah, maybe here too. So I, I heard like a bit uh, another change in my head, and I did it real quick, but I didn't do the right hand to reflect. Cool. Uh, how would it sound if I went? Probably better. Um, okay, so now let's look at the ending. Maybe right here, let's just, uh, it's a C, and then we're gonna hang on the C for a bit. Two, three, four, two, three. So <laughs> that's what I'm hearing. Um, yeah, probably some kind of four to five chord. Yeah, like that. Let's keep it simple. So we'll all do another pedals to note length. Boom. And there you go. Those are your chords. So. Let's uh, use that as a guide for next week. We have E flats, and then we have, um, hmm, drawing a blank, a, a B flat, right? Then we have 
G minor, no, F, and then G minor. Great. So let's copy that over to the next part. Um, the next half is just uh, the F chord, no G minor. And then you do it again. But this time, while well, I was um, mumbling earlier, was instead of going to B flat, let's go to a G minor. So uh, this is the part where it goes. Um, am I on here? So that part. Anyways, so th that's that part. Um, and then it goes E flat, and then yeah, so that part's different. That goes to E flat, F, and then you would think it goes to G minor or like a D chord even, um, but it goes to C. And then it just hangs on C for a bit more. Uh, let's add that in there, and then D. I think the D is only on the fourth beat. Cool. Um, well that sounds fun. So now we can orchestrate the melody. Uh, you know, in addition, before we, since we have a little bit of time left, what time is it, by the way, now? 9 9.49. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a melody. And I'm not, I'm not sure where I'd put the melody. Uh, we could just practice in a, in a certain voice that we would want it to be in. So let's say maybe horn again. Um, could be. Uh, let's actually think about this for a second. <laughs> I, I would say uh, horn or trumpet would be really nice. So let's just not think about too much. Let's just go into it. Let's pick one of the nicer ones. Uh, let's just do these two. And let's do both of them together. And what was the line? And then maybe exchange the voice after that. Let's try again. See if I can get a better pass. I'm I'm not sure where I, what I should do with the middle notes there. Maybe just attack the G twice. Okay, um, 
the horn was too high on the on the part where it goes to the high E flat, so it was just trumpet really. But the horns do add a lot of uh, body to the melody, so uh, this is trumpet for now. Let's go A. Okay. All right, so I think I got most of those notes in. Let's try uh, hearing back one more time. Right there. So let's check that with the piano notes. Oh, hello. Look at that. So let's make sure that we have active part on. Let's do that. So let's change those two notes around. Is that right? I'm not sure. Let's see. Oh, uh, so it's a B flat. Oh yeah, I did flub a few notes, huh? So let's uh, make sure th these are right. So maybe instead of going B flat, B flat, or A A, let's go. Hmm. All right, let's listen with the piano. Yeah. I think that's pretty good. And then the ending. Cool. Um, let's do, listen one more time while we're here. And we'll, we'll kind of give it some context right before it. I'll just mute the drums. <laughs> So there's a few things I, I just want to um, modify. Some of it's timing. Cool. Uh, let's see if I can get that even louder. So this is the final melody, but just kind of try to sell myself the melody so I can not get distracted by any weird timing issues or volume issues. Okay, so I think this needs to be ahead of the beat like that. Okay, and then maybe chop it up here just one more let's try that All right, 
And then once we get this section orchestrated, which easily can take two hours, honestly, um, we can create an ending. An ending probably won't take too long. We Another episode for the ending. So we could probably finish this in two more episodes. All right. So that is it for today. Um, like always, I like to play from the top and bottom. Uh, even if it's a work in progress. Uh, I always try to do that so that we can uh, leave on a good a good note. With that being said, just make sure that you guys like and subscribe to this video channel if you haven't already. Uh, uh, sh share it to any of your friends that you think would appreciate something like this. You know, maybe they're aspiring composers or uh, maybe they're young guys who, you know, have thoughts of, uh, composing for video games or film and uh, just uh, see see what happens and you never know I really enjoy um, you know the educational side uh, right now I don't really have much time to do like YouTube videos and tutorials anymore it's been just too busy to, to do um, editing and all that sort of stuff but uh, I'd love to do that in the f in the near future, but for now, I think these live streams um, are a good like uh, middle in between where I don't have to really do any editing afterwards. I just uh, dish these out and put them out there for anyone to watch. Uh, in in return, though, I do ask for uh, just any support that you guys can uh, offer, whether that be anything from the tip jar that I have in the descriptions or if you have uh, just by liking the videos, sharing it, any any way of uh, just spreading my channel out, I do appreciate it. Let's go ahead and press play and um, let's make sure that these are muted. So again, uh, this part is just a sketch. We're blocking out chords, we're getting the melody in, and we'll orchestrate that starting next week. Uh, so with that being said, thanks for watching. Um, you know, let me go ahead and just uh, also try one thing here to make sure that this is working here. Um, let's see if you guys can see me. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I just want to thank you uh, again. Uh, I, I can't think enough. Um, but with that being said, um, I try to do these live streams every week now. So uh, just plan on sometime on Thursday, usually around 8 p.m. I'll do it for about two hours. And again, th th these this is just something I have no real idea where this is going. I, I just really enjoy composing um, and doing it live uh, just gives me a, a chance to challenge myself to write and, and do all all crazy types of genres out there. In return, um, I just hope that anyone that's watching uh, gets something out of it and it's a win-win for both of us. So, all right, with that being said, I'm Joshua Soon. I'll see you later.